In the days following the Uvalde school massacre, which left 19 students and two teachers dead, I implored everyone watching the show, regardless of what you think about any gun control laws, to try to do the one thing we can all do immediately. Appreciate and recognize the warning signs and red flags that so often lead up to a mass shooting, and certainly existed with the guy in Uvalde. The unhinged statements, the social media posts, the obsession with violence, the threats. Ordinary citizens, school officials, counselors, law enforcement, all of us need to speak up and follow up when we see or hear something disturbing. It works. And we in the media need to highlight those instances when it does, when they take the guns out of the hands of dangerous people before innocent people are hurt. Too often the media limits its coverage to the aftermath of a mass shooting and the inevitable questions of what could have or should have been done. So we're going to do that again tonight on the show. We're going to talk about and to the Menifee California Police Department, which got a call just before 2 in the morning on Saturday about a 17-year-old who was sending social media messages about, quote, shooting up a school and kids. Threats didn't mention a particular school, but police figured out the teen was a senior, one of the high schools in that district. They also got information that he was harassing other students and that he had a gun. By midday, detectives had a search warrant and arrested the 17-year-old. And guess what they found? On him, a ghost gun, a pair of brass knuckles. What on earth is a 17-year-old who's too young to legally purchase a firearm doing with a ghost gun? So kudos to the Menifee Police Department for listening to the people who reported those social media posts and for not hesitating to investigate immediately Kudos to them for recognizing the warning signs and acting fast. And they couldn't have done that without the witnesses who saw the posts coming forward. This is exactly what I am talking about. If we are going to stop the next mass shooting, we need to talk about the good outcomes as well. The moments when something was done, not just the coulda, woulda, shoulda. 17-year-old suspect was bo booked into juvenile hall on charges of criminal threats, possession of brass knuckles, possession of... An unregistered firearm. The department says this school year they've gotten 25 to 30 social media threat reports. Other departments, by the way, around the country are seeing uh, this as well. Menifee detectives investigate everyone to determine if it's credible on top of their existing caseload. I highlight that because despite everything these officers are dealing with and have to go through, they're still being vigilant in checking out major red flags, and that can make all the difference. Joining me now is Menifee. Police Chief Pat Walsh. Chief, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. All right, so take us through the timeline here, how your department heard about this and how you responded. Well, first off, thank you, Dan, for highlighting this. It's, it's really important that, um, that people know that we work very hard when we get these threats. We received a phone call from the Hemet Police Department there to the east of us and uh, they were looking into uh, something and they, they somebody talked about this social media threat. So they called us right away and our detectives came in from home and they just hit the ground running. They worked uh, through the night. Uh, these investigations take a long time. You have to, you know, look at the, you know, you're looking at somebody else's screenshot. You have to write a search warrant to the social media companies, figure out who owns that IP address. I mean, it's a lot of work. Fortunately, well, unfortunately, we've had a lot of experience in Menifee this year. We've had uh, uh, about 27 of these. Huh. And so we have a, a pretty good relationship with the social media platforms and our school districts. We, you know, we don't have to look for somebody in the school district. We pick up the phone and right away they're working with us. And just some really good police work was done here. And you're absolutely right. Uh, if it were not for uh, a citizen coming forward to talk about these threats. We can't say for 100% this kid was going to do something, but right. uh, in, my, in my heart of hearts, I think we stopped a, a tragedy. Well, and, and you mentioned, again, you can never know for sure, right, whether someone's going to go through with it or not, but that's the whole point of what we're talking about, which is to stop it before we get to that point. When you talked about the 27 incidents that you've had, how many of those would you describe as, you know, potentially serious threats that were uh, addressed? I, I would say the, the, the vast majority are uh, immature children uh, seeking attention. Right. I would say 99%. We had one other uh, threat uh, early on in the school year that we felt was a, a lot more serious. Uh, and it, again, 
it was an adult, a 19 year old, and uh, we ended up making an arrest in that case too. So I would say out of all of those 27, two were, were to, to us legitimate, but we yep. treat them all as legitimate because they cause panic and anxiety. Uh, I don't think my detectives had a weekend off in the last couple of weeks. So it, it's a, a lot goes into these and, you know, school uh, teachers and school administrators and parents, the anxiety is real. We are actually at the schools every day uh, until Wednesday when school's out. We're, we're just going to be there. Well, and that's part of the point, right? I mean, you, you said that 99% of the, you know, let's say 26 of the 27 or whatever it is, turned out to be immature kids, whatever, looking for attention. But there's only one way to figure that out, is to right. go and investigate it and determine. And if there's one of 27 that you stop, my goodness, that's, a, you know, that's an amazing feat in and of itself that has to be focused on. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think this one Saturday was uh, was a tragedy. If we didn't catch this kid, you know, and hopefully, hopefully this sets him straight. Uh, I I would say one of the big issues too, Dan, is social media is uh, almost unchecked by yep. uh, parents. Yep. And you know, my kids are in their thirties, so I don't have to worry about it anymore. But if I had a young kid with a smartphone, that's a very powerful computer in their pocket. Um, I think it would be important to have an app that tells me what my kid's doing, yep. my kid. So uh, I always re I recommend to the parents, know what they're, what they're doing on their phone. Totally agree with you. Also, friends of kids, when you're looking at what your kids are getting on social media, it's another way to see what's going on. You've got to speak up if you see anything. It's, it's just critical. Chief, thanks so much uh, for what yes. you're doing. Thanks for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.